The more data I amass on my hard drives and Amazon cloud storage, or lack thereof, the more I get paranoid about losing it. I don't really have any files of my own prior to the last half of my high school career. I knew nothing about data storage and I could not care less at the time. I do remember having backed up things to Mediafire, G Drive, or probably other non-existing non services these days, but I literally have no way of finding that data. I threw away disks, erased hard drives, and it sucks, and I don't want it to happen again. I'm Eeples Vox here to make tech easier and more fun with free educational videos, and today I'll be walking you through one of the steps of my data backup and management plan, setting up cold storage on Blu-ray disks. Tired of your streams or voice chats sounding like this? Do you want the comfort and quality of high end headphones without sacrificing microphone quality? Antline's Mod Mic 5 is the perfect solution. Their dual capsule microphone attaches easily and securely to your existing headphones and fits within any setup thanks to the modular cable system. It comes with a cable wrap to protect your wires, an optional inline mute switch, and sounds a little something like this. Check the link in the video description to learn more. Before we begin, I want to give a quick shout out to the people over at the Data Hoarder subreddit and my buddy Sir Crest for helping me fine tune the details of how I wanted to go about this. For this process, I picked up a 50 pack of verbatim 25GB Blu-ray Disc R 6x speed discs. I specifically chose this set because they use inorganic dyes, which will break down much less over time compared to other discs. And the hard coat tech that Verbatim uses is fairly difficult to scratch overall, which is important to these discs being able to serve as a practical long-term backup. Backing up to optical media is a pretty controversial topic. Many over on the subreddit claimed super short lifespan and easy corruptibility of disc media, and yet I have CDs and DVDs of various games and data that I burned over 10 years ago that still work fine today. For cold storage that ideally will never be needed, I'm happy with the medium. Just make sure you're storing them in safe indoor conditions. You can use the spindle that the blank discs came on, a soft padded disc binder, plastic cases, and so on. Just make sure they're away from direct sunlight, heat, humidity, and other harsh conditions. You will also need a Blu-ray writer drive too, of course. Mine also supports M-Disc, but from my research, the M-Discs for Blu-rays aren't much more reliable and aren't really as necessary compared to their DVD counterparts. I chose 25 gigabyte discs as they provided the best value of dollar per gigabyte at about three cents per gigabyte and a little over one terabyte of space for the $40 50 pack that I bought. Since we're not burning movies, we don't need to worry about the cost per disc, we just want the cost per gigabyte of the storage we can use for backup. I've primarily focused on backing up my pictures and my music collection thus far. I used 7-zip to create a basic .7z archive of the files, split it into parts based on the size of a Blu-ray disc. There's actually a drop-down selection for 25GB Blu-rays, which saved me the trouble of calculating the exact byte amount. There isn't an option for 50GB discs though. Each part essentially filled a full disc, down to the last part. Depending on the size of your data, of course, the last archive usually left at least a couple gigabytes free on the disc. I used this space for parity storage. This would allow me to, potentially, recover some blocks of data if certain archives became corrupt. For the parity creation, I used a program called Multipar. I added the 7-zip archives and selected 100% block allocation. I chose variable size as the sizing scheme, which created multiple parity files of various sizes instead of a single file. This was on the recommendation of a few articles, although their focus was on using QuickPar to create parity for Usenet shares. I thought it might be worth trying here. Then all that needs done is to use the redundancy slider to select a recovery data size that will fit on the disk with the final archive file. I believe with my pictures disk, the last archive split was a little over 6 gigabytes, so I created parity files up to 18 gigabytes or so to take up the rest of the disk. But with my music collection, I only had about 1 gigabyte of parity that I could fill. Obviously, the closer to 100% you get with redundancy, the more data you can recover. If you wanted to have full 100% redundancy, you could, but then you'd be burning a whole separate set of disks to burn the remaining parity files instead of just filling the last disk to not waste space. This was my biggest challenge when I used to back up DVDs, was making full use of all the space on each disk without sacrificing organization of the files. 
This way, the extra space is going to good use and the disks are neatly organized. I then use Image Burn to burn each of the main archive splits and then the final archive split and the parity files to my Blu-ray disks and tell it to verify when done. It will spit out an error if it fails verification. Label the disks with a Sharpie and you're good to go. You can use a regular soft padded disk binder, plastic disk cases, or sleeves to store the disks. You can also make easy disk sleeves from standard pieces of paper by folding along the edges around the disk and then folding it in half, which can be labeled and stored too. This is a great way to recycle paper as well. Personally, I plan to just use up every disk and keep them stored on the spindle they came on. I won't be touching them anytime soon, assuming all goes well, and they won't get moved, so overall risk of scratching is pretty slim, especially with that hard coating technology. This way I can just throw them in a closet or fire safe and rest well knowing that I have serious cold storage of my data that isn't relying on a mechanical hard drive surviving the test of time. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, and I will see you in the next one. EpostVox is a Patreon-supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen right now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other things, go to patreon.com slash to learn more.